So uh, you were retired in 06 or 07? Uh, February 1st, 07. Okay, so after the like 06, 06 season. Yeah. Um, so what's some of the stuff you've been doing since then? I know you've been doing like some consulting work with teams. Well, the first two years after I retired, and this is before I even talked to you, I worked with the NFL officials. I was a liaison between the, well, I was a liaison, I was really working in the officials office. Uh, I was a, a consultant on special teams with the officials. Okay. I would go in every Tuesday and Wednesday in New York. I'd fly in New York from LaGuardia, from Wilmington to LaGuardia. Uh, go there and spend all day Tuesday and three quarters, half to three quarters of day to Wednesday. Fly back home and do that every week. Uh, I'd go to their, uh, the officials have a training camp that's going on uh, two weeks in Dallas. They have their, their regular training camp. And I would go there and I would speak to all the officials to how to better officiate special teams in the NFL. <coughs> it was an area they felt Mike Pereira, who does Fox with the NFL now, right. he, feel, he felt it was very, he's not the director anymore, he retired a year ago. He felt that the uh, officials were weak, weakest area was in special teams. So I became a consultant. I'd go in every Tuesday, I'd sit there and watch game film with them. they say, Chuck, what do you think of this foul? Or should this have been a foul? Um, what's a better way to teach it? I'd meet with their, uh, what they have, they have various uh, uh, trainers, They tra- guys that train the officials. Right. These are ex-retired officials. I'd meet with them. Uh, and in Dallas, I'd give a speech every year uh, and speak with them about that. And I did that for two years. That seems interesting because it seemed, I would guesstimate maybe once per game there's kind of a controversial, you know, maybe block oh, in the back or, oh, you know, oh, some clipping or something like that. Yeah, yeah too many. Too yeah. Many. And, and it, but it's better. Right. It's got better when I was coaching, I thought, and it's, it's got better in, in the last you know, four years, yeah. I think. Uh, not just because of me, because the officials are better educated and they yeah. work at it. And they made more effort at it, and yeah. And they're taking more pride in it. Right. And they were always great at it before, and now they want to know, why were you, why as a coach were you teaching that, Chuck? They knew me as Chuck. I mean, I've been in the league eight, 17 years. Yeah. They knew me. They, I knew every one of them. There's 117 officials. I knew them all. Right. And uh, we used to tease and laugh, and, but at the same time, I'd get after them, and they used yeah. to tease me about them. When I'd go to the, the clinic in Dallas, they'd get all over me. <laughs> I mean, they really... Get some get some payback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I walked in the first... I always wore a towel around my neck. I don't know if you ever saw Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But when I first walked in, uh, the first time I walked in like this, and I had a towel around my way today, and they went to the place with crazy. <laughs> there was about 160. So the retired guys were there, and it was fun. But, so we worked on that for two years, and I thought they got better. Well, then Mike took the job at Denver, and Josh McDaniel called me two years ago and asked me if... If I would like to work, about two months after you hired Mike, if I'd like to work with them as a consultant. Mike being your son. My son, Michael, yeah. who's with yeah. the Vikings. Right. It, would I like to work with them? And he, I'd, use, I'd come in training camp and work with Mike, which I still do, and I'll do this summer if they get off strike. And um, he said that then you'd come in and you'd be part of the staff. He said, basically, I want you to uh, come in every Saturday night and, and feed, meet with us if you can, and then if not Sunday. And, I want you to be there for ch- help me with challenges, help me with timeouts, help me with yardage, spotting, things like that. And I did that for two years. Of course, that thing all fell apart with Josh and uh, that whole situation, which was sad and sad because he's a good young coach and he's he's got a chance. But uh, so now with Mike going to Minnesota, I'm I'm going to officially retire. Oh, okay. Yeah. Officially. All right. So you were so you were semi semi retired the last right, few years. Exactly. Okay. With um, the stuff you were doing with the officials, uh, did, were you involved with the, I think they recently got rid of the wedge, using the wedge? Yeah, I was involved. Well, you know, were you against or for, or, you know, what, tell me a little bit more about that. That's good. That's a good yeah. question, Brett. I ran the wedge. Right. I was known that if, you know, you as a writer, you so I think certain people hang their hats on certain things uh, that they did. Um uh, and how they coach or how they teed or how they write and what your forte is and so forth. My, if you had to choose one thing that, that, that uh, I hung my hat on was my wedge kickoff return. I ran a wedge kickoff return. And we were blessed with some good returners and we had some good returns. But I truly believe that they did the right thing. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of advantage ago, does the wedge give? Oh, <laughs> in, in short. In, in short, it's... <laughs> I had, uh, here's my wedge, 300, 310, 280, 300. Right. 
Okay, and I'm running a wedge on L1, L2, and L3. Lanes, right? Yeah, lanes. Yeah. 100, but there's men in those lanes. Right. 170, 190, 210. Well, think about it. Yeah, it's a mismatch. And basically, it's... Uh, and I, when they changed it, you know, I was reluctant a little bit, but I agreed it was necessary. And then this year they changed it with the new rule, the 35-yard line. They're kicking off from this year, mm -hmm. if you're right now. And they almost banned the two men, the two men wedge and block, but they have to use two guys blocking together, which they shouldn't have done. They didn't ban it. Um, and um, I, I really think the game has changed, Brad. And player safety has become uh, the players are bigger, faster. When I started yeah. the league back, you know, when I started coaching back in the 70s or 60s actually, but I'd be head coach in the 70s in college. The game has changed so much. It's so much. They're so much bigger and faster and stronger and, and more well trained. And uh, the, the collisions on Sunday in the NFL are uh, you you just can't even imagine them. And yeah. and I truly believe that uh, Roger Goodell uh, he talked to me about it when I was still with the NFL officials three years ago, four years ago when I first met him. The first year I was working, he grabbed me aside once. Twice, and then when I spoke to him afterwards, uh, he's that was that's been more, probably he's one of the number one things he's been concerned about, and rightfully so. Um, and it was proven by statistically uh, when they changed the rule this year that the number one play in in the football game, an NFL football game, where injuries are likely to happen, are kickoff, return, and coverage, and it's usually the kickoff coverage team, right. almost two to one, not two to one overall the game, but two to one that team as opposed to the punt team, punt return, right. uh, uh, kickoff return team is because of the velocity of hitting. Right. And one of the things they changed this year, I don't know if you read about it, you don't get a running start anymore. Okay. Players get five yards to run before they can, they can run five yards. Right. So their foot can't be over the 45 or actually in this case the 30 yard line because we're kicking off from the 35 there'll be more touchbacks because there's better kickers i wasn't totally for that at first but the more i listened to it the more i agreed with it i truly i was in very much for i was involved a little bit uh, they had come up with some ideas i didn't agree with a couple of them one of which was that they wanted to be the two yeah. wedge and i think he, i said you're going to kill the returner now yeah you can't kill the return you got to have some protection for them they won't return mm -hmm. because if you put big and you'll change the roster because before I could use four offensive and defensive linemen back there. Well, now with two man wedges, you probably use two of them, and you'll probably use uh, tight ends and fullbacks. But if you made it where they none of them could get together, you'd have to have smaller guys because the guys covering are smaller and faster. Yeah. And you try to block a smaller guy in space, impossible. Right. Not running full speed. So we tried to slow down the cover team, right. which we've succeeded in doing. There's no way he'll be as fast down the field now. Right. We've shortened the distance he's got to run. He used to have to run from the 30. Now he's got to run from the 35. So he'll get there sooner. Less speed though. Right. Okay, but with less speed. Right. Okay, so we'll have more touchbacks, which cuts down injury too. Mm -hmm. There, you know, way back there were some proponents that wanted to cut the game. Not not this year, but in the past there were some people that wanted to cut off the kickoff altogether. Right. You know, some. Some of the older players, I mean, they hate the wedge. Yeah. I mean, they got hurt. I mean, there were concussions every time. I yeah. Mean, you, hit a, you, you hit a wedge the way you're supposed to hit a wedge, you suffered a minor concussion. You didn't know. I mean, when a guy gets up like this, that's a concussion. Right. He's not knocked out or anything. Right. And uh, and I think with the speed of the game, we, we had to do something. And I think they, the rules were good rules. I really do, Brad. Yeah. Uh, in the college ranks, you coach defense. And in the NFL, you coach special teams. Um did you prefer one over the other, or you know, how did that work out? Well, it started out kind of. Uh, my first job was uh, they didn't have special teams coaches back in the '80s when I took the job with the Packers. They had special teams guys that worked with special teams. I mean, they didn't have a full-time special teams coach. I worked with the linebackers part-time. Okay. They had a linebacker. They had a, uh, a defense coordinator. He coached the linebackers, but I'd help him run drills when he wasn't running the defense. Right. And I coached special teams. But I only coached part of special teams. They had Forrest Gregg always wanted to coach the kickoff coverage team or, yeah, kickoff coverage team. He always wanted to coach. So. 
but then by the time I got back in it again in 91, and when I came back into the league then, uh, that had become somewhat, there have been probably half a dozen, and probably, I would say, most 30 fourths of the teams had special teams coaches. They, they had special teams guys. And um, Bobby, when, he, when we left Georgia Tech, I'd been a secondary coach for Bobby, at the Georgia, Bobby Ross I'm talking about, for right. four years, five years. Um, he called in the, the day he took the job, he called in three of us out of the nine men squad, nine men assistant coaches and said, I'm, one, three, I'm taking you, I'm taking you, I'm taking you. He just took three of us. The other six, they stayed back. You know, and they all got jobs at Tech except one. Um, but he said to me, I'll never forget, he said to me, she said, Chuck, he said, I'm either going to have you coach the secondary or I want you to coach special teams. I don't know yet. Let me get to San Diego. We're flying out of here next Monday. This was a Thursday, by the way. We're flying out of here Monday. I'll be on a plane with you. He said, uh, when we get there, we'll figure this out. So Monday, Tuesday, then I'll pay him Wednesday, Thursday, about Thursday or Friday that week, he walked me off. So he said, Chuck, he said, I think I want you to take special teams. I got a guy I'm going to hire in the secondary. Da, 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 da. So I took special teams. And the first couple of years was rough because I had, uh, you're isolated. At those days, you didn't have an assistant coach, assistant special teams. Right. Now, they all have special teams assistants. They should. Yeah. Uh, I got one about my 12th year, 10th year. <laughs> Took that long before yeah. we got one. Um, and I, th I think you need one. You probably need two, to be honest with you. There's so much going on. So it was frustrating, very frustrating because of the time allotment. I was used to having tons of time, meeting time, and as a position coach and now as a special team coach, you don't get that kind of time. Right. Special teams plays a role, but it's not one-third. Right. I mean, it's one-third of the game, but it's not one-third of the game, time-wise. Time-wise, right. But, but big play-wise, it is one-third of the game. And the coaches that recognize that are the good coaches. Right. And the coaches that put the time in and allow, first of all, you'll see most of the good coaches have good special teams coaches. Mm -hmm. And those coaches know that I've got to give them that guy time. Now, like every coach, every coach wants more meeting time, not just special teams. Of course, I would always fight for more because I was special teams. I'm going to fight for special teams to right. get more meeting time, more practice time, more this time. And that was hard. I mean, and to be the rest of practice, what do you do? I mean, you can only work the kicker and punter. You can't work the kicker and punter two hours. You can't. Right. you got one kicker, one punter. So that was hard to adjust to, and it took me a while to adjust to that. But once I got into it, I really love it. It's, it's a great part of game because you're, you're always on edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cute story. I don't know how you put this in the paper, but <laughs> my first, first or second year, first year I think it was, I kept every Sunday, Monday morning, my back was killing me. It was killing me, and I couldn't figure out why. I, I'd come home. It was, it was in San Diego, sorry, and I tell Sheila, I said, my back, and I've never had back problem, think of it. And then one Sunday, it hit me. Every third down, pucker up. Every third down, pucker up. <laughs> Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten. When yeah. you do that, think about it, there's probably 40 third down plays in the game. Plus right. you got another five kickoff, you got another five kickoff return, so you got PAT field goals. People think those are a piece of cake. They're not automatic. Yeah. I lost a game once, 28-27, because the snapper bounced one back to the holder, couldn't put it down with seven seconds to go. Right. So the, there's no, you always are tight. Yeah. But you pucker up, pucker up, pucker. So yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> so I had to get used to that, but uh, I loved it. Looking back, uh, I really loved it. We, we were fortunate to have. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a, um, it'd be a fun job because it, Stressful, obviously, but it's a it's a different mindset. A lot of the special teams yeah. guys, you probably got to coach some of the wackos. <laughs> yeah, and the good guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what good part? You don't have to meet with all the personalities that involve with other assistant coaches. Right. And there are some unique ones. Trust me, Brad. Yeah. There are some guys that are they're good coaches, but they're different people. <laughs> and I'd have a hard time sitting in a meeting with them 12, 10, 12 hours a day and. On Tuesdays, yeah, when yeah. You're game planning day or Mondays, eight, eight, nine hours, right? And then six, 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 one, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you get a wacko coordinator who wants to work Friday night till nine o'clock, night two. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I'm glad that it, it worked out for, fine for me. 
Yeah. Another boss, Bobby, that respected what I did, and and then after that, we, you know, Steve Mariucci respected what I did. The other guys respected, but they didn't have any clue what I was doing. So. Right. Mariucci or uh, Marinelli, Marinelli and uh, what's his name? Morningwig. Morningwig, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think too, uh, special teams. You you probably coached a lot of the guys that were. Um, not the million dollar superstars, exactly. you know, got the guys on the cusp that were really working. Always tough guys. Yeah. And one of the things I believe that football's a tough game. It's yeah. not meant for everybody. All right. And uh, the qualities I look for in a special team player were toughness, physical and mental, that you know how to handle victory as well as defeat. Because if you think about this, Brett, if you play 10 plays in a game, you're 240, I'm 240. You bench 300, I bench 300. You made every off-season workout, I have every off-season workout. You're intelligent, I'm intelligent. You take good notes, I take good notes. You're well-coached, I'm well-coached. They play 10 plays against each other. If I win six, that's a pretty good game. Yeah. But that means you lost four. Right. Now, how do you respond to the loss? And it's the same way with the, with the big picture, with the team. How do they respond? If you win one more game, then you lose in the National Football League, you're probably going to make the playoffs 60 some percent of the time, nine and seven. Yeah. One more game. So I really believe that it's the physical toughness covering special teams, which is far tougher than any other phase of the game, mm -hmm. especially covering kickoffs yeah. and returning. And the mental toughness to handle defeat, knowing how to handle defeat and victory. Because every play's a battle, every play's a war. Right. And, and, and you've got, on, and I don't mean war, I, I should, that's not taken away from our young men in Afghanistan. I was son of one there, but it was there. But what I'm saying is it's it's a very, very demanding, physical, tough game that's not meant for everybody. Right. But you're right. I had, I had, uh, I mean, if you weren't tough, you couldn't play for Chuck Prefer. <laughs> I, I really believe, I'm, I'm a big, firm believer, toughness and technique were our models. I mean, we, we were going to, I'm not going to say out technique you, but we were going to be as good as you could be. And don't, don't, uh, I tell them the most important play is the next play. If you got beat, let's, let's concentrate on this one now. Let's learn from this one Monday morning, but let's concentrate on this yeah. next one. Yeah.